Welcome to another Applied Energistics 2 tutorial. Today will be uh, episode 3, Forge Energy P2P Tunnels. So this is a type of P2P tunnel I haven't honestly seen many people play with and I only started using it and it seems pretty cool. The one most people I believe know about is the ME one which is your channels. Talked about that last episode and they actually have a few different types. They got redstone, light, item, EU energy, fluids, and then of course Forge Energy. Instead of having creative power cells or wireless power cells, you could have a battery here or anywhere, I guess, in your base and actually push energy down your existing infrastructure. I've played around with this a bit and I'm still kind of learning, but from my understanding, you cannot use this forge energy face here. I was going to throw in a power cell and a face like that, and I had actually broken the P2P face that was here because again, this can only have eight devices. You see it's maxed out right now because of this guy. So that guy had to go, but this will not work through a controller face and get down there when I make it from my testing. And if I'm mistaken, please let me know. So I have to put it up here. Something to be aware of too. See how it says P2P FE? I've made a lot of mistakes so far by accidentally, say, having that gone and adding this now, it'll change because I clicked on it. It now says ME. So if you use a power cell and you click on it, it actually changes it to FE, which is kind of interesting. And I guess it makes sense because if I take off my creative mode, you can't actually spawn these. You have to use like a bucket to click on a tunnel to convert it to fluid. So the only one you can actually make is the ME. And then when you click on it with various things, it changes what it does. So just be aware that has to be FE. And so now if I go over here and I throw down a FE, I'm going to intentionally do the same mistake again. I'm going to link them up. Notice it's ME. You got to have a power cell handy or any type of RF device. Right click on it, it changes. Download the card so they're synced up. Device missing channel online. Okay, it just takes a little minute there. We can get rid of that now because that is just a creative power cell. And I like to use these vibrant capacitors with a Yetta wrench because they're kind of neat. So now we've got power traveling from that battery in one location through this network. It is using the one channel, like I mentioned. Actually, you know what? It's using two. Aha. See, two channels, two of the four right now are being used for my P2P tunnels there because the other ones, the other half of them here and here are on a different side of the controller. Oh, something else to mention too. I got two thoughts going on. So this is a power issue. Too much power is getting pushed, the system can't keep up. And notice it's not the main net, it's the subnet. Nope, the main net just died too. See how the power is fluctuating all weird like that? You ever notice that? You just gotta slam down some power cells. And I've thrown them on the subnetwork. So now we're at 9 mil. It seems to be kind of okay, it's not dropping to zero. And then the main net had actually died too, it's pretty low. So it could actually use a Throw a few on there. 13 mil, nice. And anything uses power if you're not familiar. Like if you're doing a lot of auto crafting or a lot of items, input, output, it uses power. So if your network ever gets wonky, just slam more power cells on it and do the same for subnets. Okay, back to this before I got distracted. See how this ME tunnel and this ME tunnel, the two here that are getting pushed to there and to there for my channels. Since those are on the other side of a subnetwork controller, they're on this face and then they're on this face, they get pushed through. They actually only end up using two channels on this, uh, this line, which is there and there. The other two that make three and four is this and this. So pushing energy on a A2 network does use more channels because you can't put it on the other side of a subnetwork. As far as I know, if I'm wrong, please let me know. If there's a better way of doing things, let me know. But yeah, the next thing is I've messed around with this 
a bit off camera, there doesn't seem to be a, a theoretical limit as to how much energy it can push. Right now, my limit is 1 million because I'm using a creative RF power cell that has a limit, you can see there up in green, of 1 million RF per tick. I did some testing with the uh, Flux Networks mod to because it has a increased energy transfer limit. And it just seems to keep going. My limit then becomes that this can only have 10 million. And then I threw six of them down and then I had 30 million. And it seemed like the AE2 system can push max integer. And there's no point to use flux networks, right? Because if you've got wireless energy, why are we wasting channels? But specifically in the Enigmatica 2 expert pack, this is kind of gated. It's hard to get into. You'll get into this type of uh, system way before you'll get into flux networks. And before I forget, since I'm actually using an extra channel, I should break another one of these because it just helps me stay organized to know, hey, I've got two tunnels missing here because these two on the energy are being used. They're occupying space. I thought this could be an interesting way to demonstrate moving power around. So I'll export uranium, accelerate it, and I will import the byproducts and accelerate that. I like this better. One thing I should have mentioned too is sometimes with these systems, you're not using many channels and maybe you never will be, like maybe only using nine of 32 here is a waste. So I can shift right click and I've copied that configuration. And if I go and I paste it over here, I can actually use, I can split the, um, the P2P tunnels. It takes a minute, now it's online. So you just have to be aware though that this frequency, C782, is actually using two channels here plus the nine over there. So if you want, you can be efficient that way. You just have to be aware of where you're using everything. And if we look, yes, you can kind of see the yellow reactor cores. So I can hit start now. The next thing would be the batteries. This is exporting power. I don't know if you saw, but there is a uh, power tap, three of them down here. So I don't know a lot about reactor designs. I just slapped this together, but apparently it's only making me 10,000. I slap this forge tunnel down and make sure it still says forge energy. Now I can, if we slap the memory card in, see it links missing a channel, it should update. So notice how it's flashing online and offline and then the power is fluctuating too. I believe that is the exact same issue because I've removed this. Now that I've put those energy cells back, we're bringing in about 10,000. So I believe this is a pretty good use case to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to power my base from that power cell and I'm going to use it to push energy because basically this can move as much energy as you give it from what I've seen anyways 10,000 is barely anything it can move at least 30 mil I think that's the highest I've seen it move when I was testing with flux networks I wanted to try and answer a question from the uh, my second video the last one somebody asked if you were to connect the ad hoc network to the main controller with a dense cable wouldn't that solve the sole issue of only being able to use eight channels, would this allow any P2P tunnel to be accessed directly from the, the main network? So it's kind of a two-part question. Um, so the ad hoc network was, I'll do that right now. I was saying you have to have this other controller in here as a subnet, and he's saying, why don't you just get rid of the subnet? I think that's what he's saying. I hope that's what he's saying, because <laughs> that's what I'm gonna talk about here. Okay, so controller's gone, and then just tie this directly to the main controller. So we've removed the red channels and the blue channels down here. So that's eight and eight. So 16 are gone, so you would expect to see 16 here. But, where is it? We've got 18. And the reason for that is these eight red ones and these eight blue ones, plus this one and this one, actually equal 18 instead of 17. So 
you could totally do this, but you would not be able to use this bottom half of the network because if you're using these 16 here to have their 16 counterparts over here somewhere, um, you, you lose half your capacity, if that makes sense. So putting this back to Okay, so putting this back to how it was, I just wanted to highlight that the communication um, Okay, putting this back to how it was, I don't actually know if this technique is called a subnetwork. It might not be. I don't um, know what it's actually called. That's just what I've been calling it. Because typically a subnetwork, if this is your main network, typically your subnetwork can't talk to your main one, but your main can talk to your subnetwork, if that makes sense. It's like a one way communication. So this isn't a true subnetwork because if I click over here, of course, the interface I slapped down can see these machines that I have over here. If this was a true subnetwork, I believe you shouldn't be able to see the items, which I can see them because that storage drive is my only item storage in the whole build here. And um, so the communication works both ways. So I guess this isn't technically a true subnetwork. 